Now are you finally excited? Let's talk about it. Hey, what's up, bookworms and those ready to bend the knee? We are back today to talk a little song of Ice and Fire, more specifically, HBO's House of the Dragon, the new Game of Thrones spinoff, which is kind of based off of the Targaryen Civil War known as the Dance of Dragons. Now, this is chronicle history. You can read about it in World of Ice and Fire and Fire and Blood. But guys, I am very excited about this show. If you want to know why, I made a separate video about this, about eight reasons why I think that this will be a very, very good show. And so I'm not going to regurgitate all that here. If you want to know why I think this is going to be great, because I know there's a lot of people that were like, ah, yeah, they, they lost me with uh, the last season of Game of Thrones. I get it. I get it. But for the people that were the true believers, like myself, now look, I was disappointed with that show just like everybody else at the ending. But you know what? I never changed with my stance on how much I love this world, how much I love these books. So I've been very excited about this because of reasons, like I said, you can find in that video. So check that out if you miss it. What we're going to do today, guys, is this isn't exactly be a trailer reaction as much because, well, I've already heard of HBO yanking this video. The people are embedding it into their they did a reaction here, and uh, HBO's uh, you know taking it down like immediately. And also because I've already watched it, so I don't feel like my reaction would be genuine. So what we're gonna do, guys, we're gonna take a look at a bunch of screenshots, uh, stills from this trailer. I'm gonna kind of talk about them now. Look, they will be loosely spoilerish. I'm not gonna tell you like the big moments that happen if you haven't read these two books here. This is chronicled history. The show isn't out yet, so I can't tell you if it's a spoiler or not. Especially since a lot of this history is kind of unreliable narrated. So. Uh, some things I will have to talk about, like I got to talk about some names, I got to talk about who marries who and things like that. I will try not to go too far into it. I'm not going to spoil those big moments for you guys because I want you to be surprised if you haven't read these. But I'm just letting you know, I don't want anybody mad at me down below about how I spoiled because they didn't know that these two got married or something. That's just something I'm going to have to talk about to kind of set up what's going on in this trailer here. So with that out of the way, guys, let's go ahead and jump into it with the first picture here. We got a look at the new uh, Iron Throne here. Uh, now, I feel like they're trying to find a way to get it more book accurate. Uh, this isn't even close, honestly. Uh, I, I don't really know if they could have found a way to do it. I do like them putting like more swords in there, you know, that Aegon the Conqueror received when he got everybody bending the knee. But, you know, the King's Landing wasn't even built when uh when this throne was actually constructed so unless they did this and then built king's landing around it uh that would be an interesting choice but again that doesn't bother me i like it i think it looks cool and you can even see uh daemon on the throne back there if you look real closely i think that's kind of a thing uh you know like say your dad says that you can have the car when you get older and so you go and sit in it and just daydream about when it's going to be yours i think that's kind of what he's doing here with uh, with right arrow looking on and uh yeah very very exciting to see this throne room again right so Fun automatically you get you back in the mode of okay I am back in the Red Keep I am back in Westeros this is gonna be a great great time let's take a look at the next one here we have okay the picture of Viserys the first cutting his hand on the throne now guys everybody does this look let's be honest this chair is very impractical it really is I I would probably be the first uh, king who'd be like can we put like a blanket or a, a pillow or something to throw over this because I'm tired of cutting myself on it. but look everyone cuts their hand on this thing it's it's just I feel like it's one of those things where uh, you fought this hard to get it. You know, I'm going to sit in it. But kind of the funny thing about that is, like, uh, for example, uh, Ares II, uh, you know, more compassionately known as the Mad King. Before he was known as the Mad King, he was known as King Scab because he cut himself on this chair so many times. So uh, a nice little detail. I'm glad they kind of leave these things in. Next up, we see uh, what, this is Kristen Cole here, the Lord, eventual Lord Commander of the Kingsguard fighting Daemon Targaryen. But I like that they are putting an emphasis here on how much Kristen Cole uses that Morning Star. That Morning Star is just, it's kind of like uh, if he had like a trusty steed, that would be it, his Morning Star. I love that. And then you see him just like completely just obliterating uh, Daemon's shield here, which I love Daemon's armor. I know some people are kind of iffy about it. I love it. I love all the the way the dragon armor looks. It kicks kick ass. Give me more of that stuff. I love those kind of things. The Kasumi, we'll talk about more in a minute. Next, guys, you want more dragons. I know a lot of people said they wanted more dragons on Game of Thrones. Well, guys, you're going to get your wish. Not quite sure on the number. I believe there's either 14 or 17 dragons that are actually active during this time period. 
Uh, you're going to lose some. You're going to gain some kind of thing. But uh, yeah, we're going to get lots more of it. And uh, yeah, you'll get lots of sweeping visuals with these dragons over the show. So HBO is going to, they're going to spare no expense, I think, when it comes to making these dragons be a very beautiful and prevalent part of this show. Now here we got a look at uh, Viserys the first. We got his small council here. You see, uh, you see the hand of the king, Otto Hightower there. But the interesting thing is down at the bottom right here, you see uh, young Rhaenyra Targaryen. Now I gotta wonder. She looks like she's serving drinks. I gotta wonder if this is the kind of thing where the only way that the gentleman in the small council here would allow her to be in the room. Because let's be honest, when you're talking with the small council, a lot of things just kind of get loose lips. You just start talking about who needs to be killed, uh, what houses need to be put asunder, things like that. So I, I think the only reason they allowed her to be there is if uh, if Viserys like, oh, she's just here to serve us drinks. But the thing is, is Viserys knew he wanted her to be his heir, and he wanted her to learn how these things worked. So he's got her there learning all the ins and outs, all of how dirty ruling can be. And I think that he wanted to keep her close because he knew that he wanted her to be his heir. Guys, I do apologize. I have been battling a head cold for the last few weeks, if you can kind of hear it here. So uh, if there's a lot more cuts in here than usual, I do apologize. I'm just saving you the pain of having to listen to me hack and wheeze like someone on their deathbed. Next up, we get a look at that tournament. And this just kind of makes me think, the first season of this is going to be so much better than the first season, at least visually, in the first season of Game of Thrones because of the budget. You think about that tournament they had in the very first episode of Game of Thrones, and it looked like there was like 12 people here. You know, look at this. This looks amazing. This is just fantastic. I, I love how this looks. Uh, a little more... Uh, I thought we'd get a little more space than this, but I guess if you want the audience to feel like they're right up on a joust and then and the ensuing fight afterwards, this is a great seat to have. So, uh, very interesting look, but I, I'm all about it. Like I said, it does look like they are pouring some money into this, as they should. And then we get a look at young Rhaenyra Targaryen here. Now, I want to talk about the costuming here, because if you just look at her costume, this is where HBO is just leaps and bounds past everyone else. You look at Wheel of Time on Amazon Prime. You look at the upcoming Rings of Power show. The costuming looks kind of party city-ish. This looks legitimate. This looks like something you could see someone wearing. So they are untouched in this. They cannot compete visually with the costuming that HBO is able to do. And this is what makes them look like the king and everyone else just looks like pretenders. They just do it right. It looks incredible. I think young Rhaenyra looks amazing. I cannot wait to see if this actress just knocks this role out of the park. I think she really is going to, even though we've only seen seconds of her doing this. But the fact that they had to cast this role twice is quite a gamble. But I, I do got to say, I, I do really appreciate how good they've done on the castings uh, at least visually, of young Rhaenyra, young Alicent, and then, of course, their adult counterparts years later. So it's a really, really great casting job, at least off of appearance alone. Next up, we get our first look here of uh, the uh, Corliss Valerian, the uh, the sea snake. Now, the thing about this is, uh, I, while I'm not really crazy about him getting his own series, I am anxious to see him on this show because, look, Targs may rule the sky, but look, the sea snake rules the seas, you know, and he is very much Daemon Targaryen's man, at least here in the beginning. So we'll leave it kind of at that, but those guys have fought a uh, literal war together, so they are very, very tight, but uh, you see him here saying that, you know, the, we, there is no question about the heir. You have an heir. It's Daemon Targaryen. Viserys is like, I don't want to choose between my brother and my daughter. And I'm kind of like, okay, Jaehaerys the uh, first. That's kind of what a king does. You've got to make these kind of decisions. So uh, very interested to see how this gentleman does in this role as Corlys Valerion, because uh, the rumor is they want to give him his own series after this. So I, he's got to knock it out of the park for me to be interested in that series, because right now it's just above that Jon Snow fan fiction series we're going to get. Here's our first look at young Cor uh, sorry, uh, Kristen Cole. This is before he is elevated to uh, the Lord Commander of the Kingsguard. I believe this whole scene here is all of the houses coming to swear fealty to Rhaenyra after she is named the heir. So uh, yeah, we'll get a good look at all the uh, young houses and uh, some of the houses you may recognize, some of them you may not, but that's part of the fun of the game here. But yeah, very, uh, I think this guy right here is, he's going to be the, uh, he's going to be the the, the lady charmer of this series because uh, my co-host of uh, As the Will Turns at Madison, she said that she didn't feel like there was very many uh, attractive guys on the show. I, I think this guy's going to get quite a few fans, if you know what I mean. Again, next, we got another sweeping shot of dragons. You want dragons, you're going to get it. And HBO, again, just kills it with their visuals. They make everything just seem so cinematic. 
And this still picture doesn't do this scene justice. It looks incredible. If you're watching on like a 4K TV, it looks amazing, guys. So I watched this trailer on my TV downstairs about three times before I did this. And that shot coming across the sun is just, just gorgeous. I love it. Then we get a look at Rhaenys. This is the queen that never was. Now, all those people, when you watched the original Game of Thrones and you felt like Daenerys kind of got... Uh, you know, a bad situation. Well, uh, I would like you to hold Rainey's ale here because she got a raw deal. She really, really did. She was actually the first Targaryen that was going to be female to rule. And then Jaehaerys the first is just, look, as great of a king as he was, arguably the greatest Targaryen king ever. He really did sidestep when it came to naming a female heir. So he basically said he was just going to stay out of it. He was going to let his council decide. And that's where I think the show is going to open up. Uh, 101 AC. AC means after conquest or Aegon, after Aegon's conquest. I believe it's just after conquest. Uh, that's what I've always kind of taken it on. But 101 years later, so they are making that decision. And they do decide to name Viserys the first, the heir, leaving her as known as forever as the Queen that never was. So I'm excited to see her. She is actually the spouse of Lord Corliss Valerion. So that is going to be an interesting couple to watch politic and maneuver. Because like I said, he is very much Daemon Targaryen's man, but she's going to sympathize quite a bit with Rhaenyra for getting skipped over maybe. you know. So I, I think that's going to be an interesting, interesting uh, way they unravel this on screen. Next, we get a look here at Daemon Targaryen uh, showing up. Now, now this is kind of interesting because I know that the big battle, the big war they're going to have on this is the War of the Stepstones. Now, the War of the Stepstones goes on for quite some time. This is actually a very famous scene, I think, comes after that where he does have the crown. He has been crowned king of the Stepstones and the Narrow Sea by Corlys Valerion. So, showing up to court uh, with the crown here at the, I think it's the fifth anniversary of uh, what uh, Alicent and Viserys' marriage here. And it's a very famous scene, like I said, of him uh, having to decide what to do with this crown because, uh, as we know, there can only be one king, right? So, uh, yeah, very, very cool scene. Uh, it doesn't look quite like it does in that awesome, awesome animated drawing that you get in World of Ice and Fire with, you know, with the dragon behind him and all that. But still, very cool that it seems like they're following the lore enough to put this scene in the show here. Uh, next, we get a look at uh, Viserys on his throne here with his sword. Now, I believe this is Blackfire, the Valerian Steel Sword. I don't recall if Viserys I ever has this sword, honestly. Um, you know, trying to keep track of who has what dragon, who has what sword when you're reading these things. Uh, because that book just goes through the generations so fast. Uh, so, I mean, I don't I don't doubt that he did at one point have it. Uh, but the thing is, is like, Viserys is kind of, he's kind of considered a weak king by a lot of people. Uh, he wasn't a bad king. He just, here's the thing, like, after Balerion died, that was Aegon's dragon. And it died on his on his watch here. And I, I think he never really picked another dragon. So he kind of, I'm believing he's just like, he's like to flash the steel every once in a while. Let people know he's not here for your bullshit. He will still get up and stab you. He doesn't need a dragon to do that. So I think it's just a show of strength. And if that is Blackfire, that is very, very awesome looking. I wouldn't imagine it would be anything else. But maybe he has his own his own sword. I'm, I'm not a, quite a, a Song of Ice Fire scholar. I know a little bit, you know, but I didn't pass the bar kind of thing. But uh, yeah, a very cool shot. And again, anytime you get anyone on that throne looking menacing, it's really, really a great, great shot. Speaking of looking menacing here, this is a big time confrontation in the book. This is uh, what this is. We got Daemon here on the left and his people. You see Masaria behind him, who is actually his paramour. Uh, and uh, I, I don't want to say too much here, but uh, there's, there's kind of a big scene between him and Otto Hightower, who is the Hand of the King, on the right side here. And this is about because uh, Daemon did take a dragon egg, and Viserys says, go get that dragon egg back. That is basically treason, stealing a dragon egg. Now, I won't tell you the reasons why he does it or what's going on here. Just know that this is going to be a very, very big scene, and it looks awesome here. This just looks really kick-ass, like, you know, cross this line. I dare you. That's just great stuff. And again, these are just the shots that make this show feel different, or this series, the way that HBO does this, feel different than every other fantasy show out there right now. And speaking of Otto Hightower, now the Hand of the King. Uh, look, now, obviously his, his first job is being Hand of the King, but if he had a second job, it is to try to find a way to keep Daemon from getting the Iron Throne. He believes Daemon is going to be basically Magor reincarnate. If you don't know who Magor is, he's a, the third king in Targaryen rule and pretty much the first absolutely awful Targaryen king that is like a monster. I mean, this guy 
was the worst of the worst. Killed everybody for basically sneezing too loud. He's the one who actually had like a lot of the secret passageways and stuff put into King's Landing. And then he killed everyone who built it because he didn't want anyone else to know about the secrets and stuff. So the guy was just a terrible, terrible person. So Otto Hightower really believes that Daemon is going to be just that, that just a redux of, of Magor. So he wants him off the throne. So yeah, they already hate each other. So I'm sure when Viserys first said, hey, go get that dragon egg back. He's like, okay, this is my opportunity to stab Daemon in the eyeball and get away with it. So it's going to be a heck of a confrontation. Big, big moment right there. Next up, we take a look at Rhaenyra. Uh, this is where she is obviously has been named the heir by Viserys. You can see him in the background there. And I believe this is where all the houses are coming to bend the knee and swear filthy to her. Although you see the uh, the, the maester there who does not look too thrilled about this. And uh, in my opinion, he wants to see her suffer a quick and swift death so they can get someone, anyone else on the throne because, you know, we can't be having the women's on the throne. That's how they felt about it in this time period for sure. And I don't believe the show is going to shy away from that whatsoever. And I mean, guys, that's basically what starts the Dance of Dragons. So, uh, yeah, that's definitely something that's going to play a pivotal, pivotal role here. Now we got our first look at Rhaenyra Grown Ups. Now, I do know there was an entertainment, or that was a Hollywood Report article that came out today that's confirmed around episode five or six, you're going to have a 10-year time jump. I know a lot of people were concerned they were going to be doing flashbacks. And I was like, I don't want them to do flashbacks. Like, you think back to Game of Thrones. I was like, besides the, the you know, the burn them all Ares the second part, I, I don't think they ever really did flashbacks. I don't count the Three-Eyed Raven stuff because that was happening in real time. So I don't count those flashbacks. So I like them telling it in a linear fashion here and just doing the time jump. So uh, as far as, again, you can't tell how these actors and actresses are going to turn out. But I think off visuals alone, they've nailed both her and Allison, both their young and their old version. Now, I think this is Rhaenyra here flying on her dragon, which if you're, God, gosh, I think her name is Cyrax. I think her dragon's name was Cyrax. Again, trying to remember swords and dragon names is quite, quite tough. But I believe this dragon is Cyrax. And uh, yeah, she is quite fond of riding said dragon. So you're going to see not only a bunch of dragons, guys, you're going to see dragon riders. It's going to be exciting, exciting times. But they're actually going to have saddles now. That's, that, that's cool. Uh, I'm all about that because... It's not probably easy to hang on to the back of a dragon, so saddles makes a lot of sense. Uh, not sure what battle this is. Like I said, War for the Step Zone seems the most reasonable to me. It kind of looks like it could be that because it is just a battle. But this war does go on for almost a decade, so uh, it, it does make a lot of sense. I forget what this the Secret Islands. Uh, gosh. Again, guys, I've read too much between then and now, but uh, there is another scene that looks like it's similar around here, and you see like all the crabs on the seashore, and it just looks gorgeous. But yeah, uh, about as beautiful as war can look, right? And then you get a shot of, now this is, we see a daemon with, uh, with Dark Sister. Now, Dark Sister is his sword, and I remember that one because I think that is just the coolest name for a sword. Now, that sword was originally with Vicinia, who was the wife of Aegon the Conqueror, the sister wife, rather. But I uh, hear he's taking care of a triarchy soldier uh, with, with no problems. And look, I, I've heard a lot of complaints about Matt Smith. They just can't buy him as a Monter or Daemon Targaryen. Look, guys, I loved Matt Smith on Doctor Who. And I think that a lot of people that didn't watch Doctor Who, Doctor Who just see like the gifts and stuff. And they think he's just kind of a big goofball. And he is. But that show, he's very serious a lot, too. And the guy is a great, great actor. So I think he's going to surprise some people in this show. I've heard some people say he's too ugly to be Daemon. I've heard other people say he's too funny to be Daemon. This guy is going to surprise you. I think he's going to be awesome because I just know this guy is a great, great actor. Moving along here, I don't really know how you move dragon eggs. I got to assume that's what this is here because, you know, if you get a dragon egg too far away from Dragonstone, it's going to turn to rocks, basically, like the like the dragon eggs that Daenerys had. So uh, I don't know if that's what's going on here. You have to keep it in this... I don't think they're making omelets right here. You know, I have no idea what's going on. I think maybe this is when they go and get... Otto Hightower goes and gets the egg back from Daemon Targaryen. This is them taking it back to Dragonstone. That's the only thing that I can assume there, but... Uh, such a such a cool looking egg. I mean, I, I still my, my wife still wants like a bust of one of these, and you know I should have got it uh, right after Game of Thrones ended and all their merchandise the, they started reducing the price of them because no one was buying it anymore. I should have bought one then instead of now because I'm pretty sure they're probably gonna go back up again. And then we get a look here. Uh, this is Daemon with his dragon, who I know is called Caraxes, and that is a bloodworm dragon, and that is a very cool looking dragon. I think they're, they're going to use a really Good mix of practical effects and special effects here. And I think that this is going to be kind of like they did with what Spielberg did in 93 with Jurassic Park. Where this close-up like this are going to be using, you know, an actual physical 
practical effect. And then, you know, later on, you know, when you see them, all of a sudden you see them flying on it. And in the same scene, you see him like, you know, kind of trying to, it almost looks like kind of restrain him a little bit or calm him down. That obviously is going to be, you know, CGI, but it looks really good. That's that's what the questionable is. When you start asking the question of what is practical and what is special effects, that means they're doing a great, great job. So HBO, again, I got to applaud them for throwing some money at this. Then, okay, I think they're going to lean very heavily, guys, into the blacks and the greens. Now, what that is, is when these two, Allison Hightower over here on the left, when she is the queen, and then, of course, you've got uh, Rhaenyra. Now, here's the thing is she, Rhaenyra, would actually wear, like, black dresses and Allison would wear green dresses. And it just basically became, like, a way to say, hey, were you Team Edward or were you Team Jacob, basically? Were you in favor of Rhaenyra or were you in favor of Allison? So people would kind of wear those colors, green or black. So it's kind of like, you know, the first real big, like, you know, my side, your side kind of thing here. But, again, this is the, the Cold War before the Civil War kind of breaks out is the blacks versus the green. So that's very cool. And again, the costuming looks absolutely amazing. Love, love the star. That's really awesome, awesome stuff, man. And yes, just this throne room just looks so awesome. I'm so happy to see it again. Aren't you guys just happy to see it again? I'm really happy to see it again. And uh, here we see Daemon with his gold cloak. Now, here's the thing. He didn't create the King's Guard, but he did create the gold cloaks, wearing of the gold cloaks. So that's a nice touch there. So I always do appreciate seeing that. And I mean, that's just the coolest look there is, right? The coolest look in security is a nice gold cloak. Then we see, okay, okay. now we got Cor uh, Kristen Cole again. I keep wanting to say Corliss whenever I see Kristen Cole. Again, I love that you're seeing the Morning Star. Again, I think that's just something that just is basically his right hand. And he is fighting here. He is fighting Amon One-Eye. Now, how did he get the One-Eye? You're going to find out about that. Uh, I don't see a weapon actually at Amon's hand. So I wonder if this is like a surprise swing. Like, whoa, whoa, calm down here. Not really sure we will find out what happens there. But here's another look at the young versions of Rhaenyra and Alicent. And then, of course, uh, you know, because they were friends when they were younger. That's the thing about this. They were very good friends in their childhood. And then Allison marries Rhaenyra's dad. So, obviously, that's going to make things a little awkward, I think. And as you can see, then seeing them much older and they're further apart. They're not really making eye contact. They don't like each other. So, there's a lot of unspoken tension between them that you really don't need to speak to know that they are not thrilled with the way that things have went down. Uh, I think Allison's more happy than Rhaenyra is, but, you know, again, you will see, guys, that there is a struggle on both sides. And here's the thing is, I don't feel like this show is, unlike Game of Thrones, I don't feel like it's going to have anyone that you consider the good guy. Now, I don't mean that they're all bad. I just mean, like, no one thinks that they're doing anything wrong, but they're all doing horrible things. They are. So I, I do feel like Eddard, I do feel like Jon Snow, I, I do feel like there were other characters on that show that you felt like were the good guys. I don't feel like there's anyone like that. Everyone's out for themselves. Everyone is trying to watch out for number one and put their butt on that throne. So it's going to be a lot more cutthroat, I think, than you are expecting. Speaking of cutthroat here, this is going to be a very, very famous scene here. You see Allison has got the dagger out and she is going after... Is she going after Rhaenyra? No, she actually is not. This is a very... Very fair. You see right there above them, uh, if you kind of look to uh, Allison's right, I believe that is Amon after he has had his eye cut out. Now, without giving away too much, so Amon was running his mouth and basically said that some of the heirs were bastards and not actually, uh, you know, the actual heirs to the throne. And so they get pissed off and they cut his eye out. So Allison is real eye for an eye type here. And Rhaenyra is like, not, let's just all calm down here and kind of stops her with the knife but uh, this is really if there is a launching point to dance of dragons this is where it all really really begins now the thing about this is i thought that na that knife that valerian steel dagger was the same one that the assassin tried to use to kill bran and that Arya eventually used to kill the night king i thought that was the same one but the showrunner ryan condal has actually come out and said that is not true that is not the same knife this is like 200 years before that calm down there's going to be uh, lots of things like that that people want to kind of have that connective tissue but this is not one of them so take that for what you will i kind of want to believe the showrunner on that and then lastly another look at a dragon i'm not sure which dragon this is but what a shot right very very cool looking. I cannot wait to see these guys in action, guys. And that is what I have for this trailer. Now, there's lots more thoughts that I could have. I could go into spoilers big, big time and talk about stuff. My thing is I'm most excited. It looks like they are staying faithful. 
And that's the big thing. You listen to George, and George has been talking about how it was very important to him to hire people that were passionate about his books. Ryan Connell basically says this is his dream job. You know, he has been a Song of Ice and Fire fan longer than me. When I read it, three books were out. When he read it, uh, the third book hadn't come out yet. So he has been into this universe even longer than I have. So I know that this is very, very sacred to him. So I don't know how much control he's got over these things, but just based off this trailer, it looks, I mean, I can, every just about every shot, I can think of something that I either read in World of Ice and Fire or just reread again in Fire and Blood. And I'm very excited to see this because guys, Dance of Dragon, like while I've gone on record saying I wish they had started with Aegon the Conqueror, this is probably the most suited for TV. I think that the Dance of Dragons is very much that Greek soap opera that this show, it looks like it's going to be. And that's just, I mean that in the best way, guys. It's just going to be so awesome. I'm very excited about it. It looks like HBO is really putting some care into this. And that's exciting because, you know, they know that they got to get all those people back who said that they weren't coming back. And I do feel like after this trailer today, a lot of people that were saying they weren't interested are kind of like, oh, well, you know what? Maybe I'll give the pilot a shot. So we're going to talk more about this, guys. We are going to be having an after show like I have with Wheel of Time. Uh, my friend Madison from uh, As the Wheel Turns, my Wheel of Time after show is going to join me. We're also going to be joined by Scott, the bald booktuber who is, like me, thinks this is probably the greatest fantasy universe ever created. I still give a leg up to Tolkien, but like it's barely. It really is barely. I got to talk about that sometime. But again, guys, I'm very excited to talk to them. I'm very excited to talk to you guys more. What did you guys think about this trailer? Are you finally excited? Drop in the comments and let me know. And we will talk more together as a group about this. Uh, I believe either probably tomorrow or Monday we'll be getting together to talk. It kind of depends on when schedules work out. So anything you guys want to hear us talk about, let me know. And let me know what you thought about this trailer. Are you excited at me? Are you still just like, nah? I don't know if you watched this video this far if you're not really still excited about it, but uh, I would love to hear what you think down below. So let me know there, and I will talk to you then.